I'm Chris Milne, sports physician, and I've done a fair few, probably thousand injections in my lifetime, and I'm just going to give you a practical demonstration about injection technique for soft tissue injuries. Hamilton sports physician Chris Milne says cortisone injections are worth having in general practice. Firstly, it's something else that you can do as a service to your patients, uh, and particularly for rural doctors, uh, that may save them an hour or two hours uh, in each direction to a major centre where they can have the injection. The second thing is that if you use landmark guidance as we do in clinical practice, uh, it's a lot more cost effective for most injections. Landmark guidance, as opposed to ultrasound image guidance, is a procedure wherein a patient's anatomical features are used to identify where an injectate is delivered. If anti-inflammatory medicine cortisone is used, the injectate can reduce swelling. And that can obviously be helpful in terms of reducing the volume of tendon going underneath a bony prominence, for example, so that then it slips more easily through there. Reducing irritation in a tendon so that then you can work on a progressive concentric then eccentric strengthening regime, which is the mainstay of modern tendon management. Dr. Milne says there are four things that you need to have in order to perform the injection in general practice. First thing is what to inject, uh, that's cortisone, the active ingredient, and obviously some local anaesthetic mixed in with it. I prefer to use triamcinolone or kenacort because it's theoretically got the longest um, half-life uh, and it tends to last around the body for a couple of months uh, and it tends to cause less few, uh, post-injection flares. Uh, the second thing is a local anaesthetic and you want to mix this in with your cortisone and do the one injection. The idea is the local anaesthetic mixed with cortisone goes into the same site and provides early pain relief and usually uh, lignocaine is what I prefer because you get it virtually within minutes you, you know that your, your injection is working as opposed to marcaine which has got a delayed onset. In terms of the size of the needle, uh, I use a 21 gauge needle to draw up my material and then a smaller needle, 25 gauge times inch and a half uh, to inject the material. By way of no-touch technique, GPs can inject cortisone to three anatomical sites, the subacromial space. The important thing is to find your anatomical landmarks with the outer end of the acromion, and, and as I say, then come down from there and direct your injection uh, supra-immediately, uh, aiming towards the AC joint where I've got my uh, middle finger of the opposite hand. Uh, and it's a pretty straightforward injection technique. Usually the injection should be carried out under low res uh, minimal resistance. Um, if you're hitting high resistance then you're not in the right spot and obviously if you hit uh, periosteum on the bone the patient will certainly let you know that because it'll be pretty painful for them. The lateral elbow. Localize the structure uh, of the lateral epicondyle pretty carefully so here we are, are over the prominence of that uh, and uh, then coming d down there distally uh, a couple of centimeters and injecting in this particular angle here uh, starting going deeply uh, with uh, the inject date and then uh, pepper potting around the area so angling the needle and then progressively pulling back and uh, withdrawing a little bit and repeating the process uh, so that the two mils of injectate is uh, divided up into multiple small aliquots rather than one large volume of injectate going in one spot. Otherwise it'll distend the tissue and be quite painful for the patient. And the knee. Uh, the critical thing is to identify your lateral tibial plateau joint line and then go lateral to the patella tendon and angle in at uh, 45 degrees angle. You only have to put the uh, needle a centimetre or a centimetre and a half in under the skin and you're in the knee joint itself. Uh, so, and, and again the needle should go, the injection should go in under low resistance and, and um, is, is pretty well tolerated because the knee is a large joint. The most important pose uh, side effect to warn people about is what's called a post-injection flare. Uh, the, the, the dimpling probably occurs up to about 10% of the time for the superficial injections. Post-injection flare maybe 2 or 3% of the time uh, and that'll classically manifest itself by pain coming on when the local anaesthetic wears off so anything between an hour or two and 24 hours after the injection and the pain will be a whole lot worse. 
cold packs, ensuring the patient has a good range of motion, full dose of anti-inflammatory tablets, and even COX-2 agents in the first instance can be used to ease the flare. The flare would usually settle overnight. If it doesn't, then my usual routine is to give these people prednisone 40 milligrams each morning for three to four days, and usually that will uh, settle the effect of the post-injection flare pretty well. If they have to have a future injection, then the plan would be to make sure that those people uh, are given some sort of prophylactic dose of prednisone or something like that before they have a subsequent injection. Dr. Man says septic sites and skin sites with active folliculitis or cellulitis should be avoided if injecting cortisone. I think you've got to be careful where people have had uh, untoward reactions. If somebody's had a nasty post-injection flare before, it doesn't put me off doing the injection, uh, but I tend to cover those people with some prednisone 40 milligrams on the morning of the injection and then uh, for a day or two afterwards. Dr. Milne says there are other sites that GPs can inject cortisone to with added experience. For example, the AC joint, medial elbow, referred to as the golfer's elbow, the lateral hip, lateral ankle, posterior capillitis of the ankle, and the plantar fascia. Uh, to me, there's no substitute for actually going to sit in with an experienced practitioner who does a fair few injections. So be that with a sports medicine or other musculoskeletal specialist, rheumatologist, orthopedic surgeon, all the musculoskeletal specialists do these injections from time to time but it is very much a luck of the draw thing in terms of who turns up at a clinic on a particular day. This is Reynold Castaneda for New Zealand Doctor.